Hello, I'm Kent Myers. I'm Mick Cornett, and it's time for the verdict. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy Law Firm presents The Verdict, an objective discussion of contemporary legal issues hosted by Kent Myers. This program is co-sponsored by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Well, this week's show deals with the issue of workers' compensation. Let me introduce one of Oklahoma's top legal experts and my co-host, Kent Myers. Kent, I've heard you talk about this issue, and you call workers' compensation a pocketbook issue. What do you mean by that? Yes, well, we've talked about other things uh, on this show that are interesting to our uh, viewers, but, but basically workers' compensation involves the pocketbook of almost every Oklahoman. It involves the pocketbook of the worker who is injured on the job and can't work, it involves the pocketbook of the business person that may have to pay the cost of the uh, compensation for the workers. It involves the pocketbook of the taxpayers that have to support the uh, workers' compensation system generally. And we want to talk about this today. There's no reason to try to hide it or sweep it under the rug. It's a big pocketbook issue for lawyers. Now, let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, last night, I sat down and looked through the yellow pages of the Oklahoma City uh, phone directory. And on the front cover and the back cover are lawyers advertising that they do workers' compensation work. Within the yellow page advertising for lawyers, more lawyers advertising in the yellow pages advertise that they do workers' compensation work than any other kind. I think today we're going to hear some questioning about whether that's appropriate, whether that needs to be changed, and if so, we'll hear about what effect they may have, that might have on lawyers' pocketbooks as well. So I think it is really a pocketbook issue. Well, it, it affects the person that hires people, it affects the employee, it affects lawyers, it has political ramifications. It is a controversial issue. It's workers' compensation, and it should be a lively discussion right here on The Verdict. children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. I enrich our cultural landscape. I help define our quality of life. I am one of 4,000 artists in central Oklahoma who receive support from Allied Arts this community's united arts organization. I am. I am. I am an allied artist. In Oklahoma, there are more than 1,600 children waiting to be adopted. They're of all ages. And for many, home has been a source of pain and conflict. They've dreamed of finding a better life and a loving family. Consider adoption. For more information, call 1-877-OK-SWIFT or visit the website www.okdhs.org. Adopt. It may be the toughest job you'll ever love. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and we're ready to discuss the issue of workers' compensation. Kent, why don't you introduce our guests? Yes, we're pleased to have two people who work with workers' compensation problems all the time, albeit in different ways. The first uh, is the Labor Commissioner of the State of Oklahoma, the Honorable Brenda Renault Wynn, yes. uh, the serving as a Labor Commissioner since 1995, works with this uh, workers' compensation system all the time. 
and the newly announced uh, uh, candidate for the office of lieutenant governor in the state of Oklahoma. We're sure pleased to have you, Commissioner. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And we also have Fred Betcher, who sees a different side of the workers' compensation system as a practitioner and the uh, managing partner and founder of one of the largest, if not the largest, workers' compensation firms in the state, Betcher, Ryan, and Martin. He's a former state legislator and is a uh, founding uh, member of the Lawyers for Working Oklahomans. Fred, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Well, let's just get right after it uh, uh, so that we don't waste any time with these two good guests. Commissioner, tell us what involvement your office has, you being Commissioner of Labor, your office has in the workers' compensation system. Well, I'm glad you asked because we get a lot of phone calls that, that we have to refer to the workers' comp court itself. We actually make sure that employers have workers' comp coverage for their employees. Once a claim is filed, it's really out of the hands of the Department of Labor and in the hands of, of the, the court system or the, the claim system. And so our job is on the enforcement side regarding employers, and we're an advocate for the employee. So whom should they call? Um, employers should call the Department of Labor if they'd like information on whether they are exempt from the Workers' Compensation Act or not. Employees that become injured should contact the court system itself, I suppose, unless they have representation. About how much time in, in your day or your office's day do you spend uh, working on workers' compensation issues? We have an entire division devoted to nothing but making sure that Oklahoma employers have workers' compensation insurance for their employees. So as far as the folks in that division, it's an ongoing, um, it's time consuming every day, all day long. Um, I get the majority of my involvement comes from my concerns about the way the system is, the parts that I think can be fixed, and I hope we get to talk about that some today. We hope so. Fred, from a different perspective, tell the viewers how the workers' compensation system works today, just without getting real technical, just step by step, what happens when the worker is injured? Well, basically, all working Oklahomans are covered under the Workers' Compensation Act. There are some limited exemptions, but virtually everyone. If they're injured in the workplace, notwithstanding whose fault it is, it's a no-fault system, then they need to report the injury to their employer, and then they need to file a notice of injury and claim for compensation, which under the law they're entitled to. They're entitled to timely and immediate and hopefully quality medical care. They're entitled to weekly benefits while they're convalescing and unable to return to their usual um, occupation. And then ultimately they are entitled, if in fact they have a residual permanent disability, to a money benefit that is based upon the uh, permanent disability guides of the American Medical Association. Well, what is the role of the workers' compensation court, the judges, uh, the lawyers? Well, actually, uh, uh, believe it or not, it's a very limited role in as much as the OSHA reportable accidents in Oklahoma, for example, in the year 2000, were slightly over 200,000 lost time accidents. Uh, those reported by the court uh, are in the neighborhood of 145,000. So somewhere in between that probably rests the accurate number of, of uh, injuries. Lost time accidents. Of all of those injuries, only 19,000 ever even enter the court system, which is a very small portion. And of that 19,000, only 13,000 are represented by counsel, at least on the claimant side or the injured worker side. Of course, the insurance industry is represented by counsel in every case. But only 13,000 uh, people uh, hire attorneys to represent them on their side. And they go through the process of adjudicating their entitlements, whether it's medical care, the type of medical care, uh, the temporary disability benefits, which are based upon a percentage of their wages, while they're often ultimately a permanent disability evaluation, which is designed in some fashion to compensate an employee who has really lost some wage earning capacity throughout his lifetime. Well, I've heard it said that the workers' compensation system is a lawyer's system. It's a lawyer's compensation system. Uh, what do you, how do you respond to that? Well, I've seen that trip? same bumper sticker by my friends at the Chamber of Commerce, and I uh, certainly <laughs> would take issue with it in as much as uh, only 9% of all lost time accidents even come to a claimant lawyer. 
That's, uh, that's if you accept the 145,000 figure, not the 200,000 figure. So there are very few that come to the, to the, uh, to the uh, court with an attorney. And they usually come to the court with an attorney after they have exhausted all of their own personal abilities to secure their benefits. Seldom does anyone come in my office and hire me, for example, that's already had an admitted injury, that the employer are paying benefits, and that they're receiving medical care and attention. That's that other 155,000 that never seek legal attention. But there's unscrupulous employers, just like there are unscrupulous employees, who will fight and resist uh, of these benefits for every employee, regardless of whether the injury occurred or not, and that's the, the function of the lawyers in the system. Um, they, my clients pay me from their award. We're, uh, our fees are set at 20% of the permanent disability uh, to, uh, uh, that's uh, set secured. By law. Set by law. Uh, not more than 20%, and on temporary disability, not more than 10%, and we get no percentage of their medical costs. We collect those as an additional service. And I might add that the, uh, the uh, contingent fee in workers' compensation is the lowest in the legal profession. It's the very lowest, and uh, uh, our clients pay us, so our involvement does not affect rates. It, it can't. They pay it out of their award. Commissioner, any, any comment about that? Well, you just almost think we had a good system listening to <laughs> our friend Fred here. Um, and, and he, Is it broken? It's broken. It's broken. And, and let, me, let me tell you why, okay, why I think it's broken. Why don't we stop here and take a break, and we'll come back before you get into your presentation. Okay. I think that'd be a good okay. time. It's workers' compensation. We're here on the verdict. Hope you'll stay with us. Oklahoma City's own Ride of Spring, the 2001 Festival of the Arts from Tuesday, April 24th to Sunday, April 29th. This is the 35th annual community celebration of the visual, performing, and culinary arts. Presented by the Arts Council of Oklahoma City, the Festival of the Arts takes place in downtown Oklahoma City and features 144 visual artists, nonstop performances, food, street performers, kinetic art, children's activities, and so much more. Remember, this is your celebration of the arts in Oklahoma City. For more information, call the Arts Council of Oklahoma City. See you there. Every day, in state governments throughout the country, crucial decisions are being made that affect the lives of children and their families. But as this process takes place, children are often left voiceless. When these children raise their hands to be heard, is anyone listening? There are people listening. They are child advocates. Join us and raise your hand for kids. Shriners Hospitals for Children offer some of the finest medical care in the world, and they provide it totally free of charge. The unique family-style care at Shriners Hospitals makes it feel like home to a lot of kids. There is a Shriners Hospital helping kids from this area. So if you know a child with problems of the bones, joints, muscles, or severe burns that could be helped by Shriners, call this number for more information. Shriners, building a better tomorrow for kids. Welcome back to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Well, we're discussing workers' compensation, and with us is the State Labor Commissioner, Brenda Renault wynn And when I interrupted, you were about to give us a presentation on workers' compensation from your point of view. Well, I don't know if it's so much a, a presentation is uh, bottom line numbers, where we are, how we compare to other states. Well, It'll be us. brief. It'll be brief. <laughs> um, right now, Oklahoma is one of only three states that still relies on the court-based system. And one of the things that I would like to see happen in Oklahoma is that we move more toward an administrative system. And I don't think 
At one time, I thought it could be a pure administrative system. Probably not. Could you sum up the difference between the two? Uh, yes. Less lawyers. Less lawyers in... No a, judges? In a, well, I mean, we're going to have to have some. We have to have a decision maker. We're going to have to have a final decision maker. But if we could use more mediators in the system uh, to help people work out... A, a lot of times it boils down to personal uh, situations, like in wage disputes. People get angry. They become mad. And they want somebody to get in there and fight for them. Well, having a, an injured worker have to spend their money on, and, and no offense to, you know, and I, and I will talk about follow the money here, um, no offense to the attorneys that do end up getting involved because that's their job and we all need to retain the right to have an attorney when we choose as individuals. But the less money a worker, an injured worker, has to spend in, in getting their money that they're rightfully due, the more they can keep themselves, the better the system would be to me. So mediators serve a useful function in, in helping workers retain more of the money. Um, and I'd like to see Oklahoma move more toward that. Um, in, do, in looking at a cost-benefit analysis, a cost-benefit analysis, um, Oklahoma ranks fifth in the most costly uh, administrative or, or workers' comp system in the United States with benefits to the actual injured worker at being 48. Now, this is a pretty good picture here. So we're, we're costing more to get less. Absolutely. Now, again, I, I never want to intimate that people shouldn't have the right to hire an attorney. But somewhere in this chart, somewhere between the fifth costliest system and the 48th in, in payout, there's some lost wages here, lost compensation here to the injured worker. That's a bottom line. To the injured worker, the system is supposed to be to compensate injured workers, not lawyers. Okay. Um, now you want, you know, you have to, Fred, Fred had a good point. Um, he mentioned lawyer involvement. Now I, I have to tell you all, I changed this. I, I did have intrusiveness here, but in honor of Fred, because I respect him so, I changed it to attorney involvement because it just sounds better. Um, but when you look at this, Fred and the Oklahoma Bar Association claim that there is 9% nine, 9 in, involvement by attorneys, but the state chamber says there's 36%. The Senate study shows there's 36%. Um, Whereas, like, you know, maybe like Fred said about the numbers he was referring to before, maybe somewhere in between there's the real actual numbers. But I tend to believe the 36 percent because that's what the legislature is working from. The research has been done. That's what's being studied in, in the Senate bill. And when you boil this all down to the bottom line, this is about compensating folks who've been injured on the job, trying to get the most compensation to that person possible, and, and less to the system, whatever part in the system or component in the system that might be. And my instinct is to follow the money. And even, I took this off of the Trial Lawyers Association own website, and it is a uh, quote from Bob Burke, who is a nice guy, but even he said, Oklahoma lawyer, Oklahoma lawyer, that the perception that a bad and fraudulent workers' compensation system was hindering economic development, and it spawned massive reforms that have some lawyers worrying about their future. Now, we don't need to be sitting down at the table worrying about lawyers' futures. There's always going to be legal uh, situations for lawyers to have a future. What we should be sitting down at the table trying to work out, trying to fix, is the future of the injured worker. Can that they... sounds like the tail wagging the dog there. Um, with the worrying about the lawyer's future as opposed to right. the worker's future. So we have the Trial Lawyers Association worrying about the lawyer's future. We have those of us on the, the injured worker's side worrying about their future, but also about the economic well-being and the future of the state as a whole. Now, the state of the whole is much more dependent on the, the workers and the people who get out and, and, and create economic prosperity than it is the future of just lawyers. So. I like lawyers, some of them are good friends, but they really have too much of a place in the workers' compensation system. Not that there aren't other places that need to be fixed too. Um, there are plenty in the medical industry, plenty, plenty fixes that we can attack there too. But since there's a lawyer on with me today, then 
course, that's you know what I am focused on mostly. We're almost time for summations here, Camp. But yep. Mr. Betcher, I'm sure Fred, you want a chance to respond. Say what you'd like. Well, we're very quickly. Uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to a, say, an, a, a an administrative system. It just I just want to make sure that the administrative system protects the employee as much as it does the insurance industry. I'm concerned about the employer and the employee, and where I'm really concerned is when she shows a chart that shows uh, uh, the cost. Uh, we rank fifth, which there's a, a genuine dispute about that, our ranking, and the amount of benefits that the claimant gets. Not once have I ever heard an, an opponent of our position suggest that maybe that large uh, separation there might have something to do with gross profits by the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. If it costs much more and the employees are getting less, then why hasn't somebody said, hey, insurance industry, what's the deal? Everybody in the system says, in the insurance industry says, that workers' compensation is the most profitable casualty business an insurance company has. We have mm -hmm. had our system cheapen in terms of cost since 1994. Everybody mm -hmm. won't dispute that. My friend mm -hmm. will will say exactly, she'll agree with what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's gone down some almost 50% in costs uh, from 1 billion to 600 million from 1994 to the year 2000. But yet every year the insurance industry comes and wants more money. My suggestion might be to take the politics out of those increases by maybe having the insurance commissioner be the guy that has to sit and listen to the request rather than the Board of Property and Casualty Rates and then maybe he would listen to the little guy, the blue collar worker like Brenda's and my dad who all Absolutely. work with their hands for a living. That's, that's where I'd like to see it go. Can Those are things that are important. Let's go to a 30 second summation for each of you and Commissioner Renault, why don't you go first? I'm not going to argue with anything uh, Fred said. Um, like I said before, there are components as you go along in this system that can all be addressed. Um, I am less interested in worrying about profits for the insurance industry, uh, percentages for lawyers, um, all of the things in between. And we've got better judges that are now, you know, in place that, that have been helpful. Costs are coming down. But the bottom line is not about who makes a profit off this system. Let me rephrase that. Should not be <laughs> about who makes a, a bigger profit, whether it's insurance industry or whether it's lawyers. It should be about why is it that Oklahoma ranks near the bottom in benefit to the injured worker. And a final word from you, Mr. But one of those alternatives is the answer to the problem. And I suggest to you that it's certainly not the attorneys that represent working men and women. In 33 years of representing these people, I've never had one of them complain about a 20% attorney fee. It doesn't cost the system one dime because they pay it out of their award. Now, the insurance industry hires people. They got to pay them. It does affect cost. But I suggest the insurance industry is the culprit here, as they usually are in these rate-making situations. Well, and that's going to have to be the final word. <laughs> Appreciate Mr. Betcher. Thank you. Commissioner Renault Wynn, thank pleasure. you for coming in. Thank you. We'll be right back to wrap it up on the verdict. Kent Myers and Mick Cornett will return after this. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. It might be about the loss of a loved one. Sometimes it's just about getting older. It could be about the breakup of a family or an unexpected illness. You might be devastated by a natural disaster. Sometimes it's about losing your job. Every citizen has the right to legal counsel regardless of their situation. Legal services, keeping the promise of America. You know what I think? I think you forgot to lock your door. A lot of people do that. They forget. That's too bad because all crime needs is a chance. Don't give it the chance. It's my job to teach you to protect yourselves. Make it your job to learn. Like, uh, light up your doors. 
Lights make burglars nervous. Oh, and one more thing. Lock your door. Make a bite out of crime. Mama, I played with Natalie today. You did? She's a girl at my school. She has pretty hair, and I like her long hair. Mm -hmm. We play together, we talk together, and we were eating outside, and um, bugs got on it. Ooh. Nah. Ooh. They're just fly around and get on people's food. Then we killed all the bugs, and then it was gone before we know it. And welcome back to The Verdict. Well, Kent, how are you going to wrap up this show on workers' compensation? We didn't have time to talk to Fred about it uh, much, but he did mention, and I've got a graphic that I'd like for us to look at, about the increase in insurance uh, compensation rates. As you can see, from 1990 to 1992, there were really dramatic increases in insurance rates, according to the State Chamber of Commerce report. And then only recently has there been uh, kind of minor reductions. Um, what Fred says uh, really paints a different picture than what the commissioner said insofar as where is the money going? Is it going to the insurance companies? Is it going to the lawyers? They seem to be, however, uh, in agreement that it's not going to the worker. Mm -hmm. And I think if you were an injured worker, you'd like to see more of that uh, coming your way. Well, I thought it was interesting that $7 figure, the cost to an employer to, for every employee's $100 of salary, $7, 7%. If you break that down to a salary of, say, $30,000, that would be $2,100 per employee. So we're talking about a significant amount of money here, and it affects everybody. Yes, a huge amount of money, and all you have to do is make a small dent in it, and you've made some real progress. The uh, workers' uh, comp reform that's talked about is supposed to make a dent in that, in that number. Uh, you know, we hear about workers' compensation reform. Reform is needed when something's broken. Uh, I think it's up to our viewers to decide whether or not this system is broken, whether or not they're better off without lawyers, and let's let the verdict be theirs. Thanks again to our guest, State Labor Commissioner Brenda Renault Wynn and Attorney Fred Vetcher. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. See you next time on The Verdict. This program was brought to you by Crow and Dunleavy, a professional corporation, and also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children.